If you ever felt lost with too many credit card options, this video is for you. Welcome back to Finance Home Friend. I'm Bev, and in this video, we'll share a credit card strategy that will help you get lots of points, over 20 cards, and travel for free. It'll be a step-by-step -step guide on which cards to get and how to make the most of them. We'll explain it all in simple terms so you understand how the credit card world works. If you like what you see so far, go ahead and support us by clicking thumbs up, subscribe, as well as the notification bell. You ready? Let's go! We've got six tiers to guide you through this journey. First up is the Baby Cards tier, perfect for those with not so great credit. If you're new or had credit hiccups, this is your starting point. Next is the Beginner Cards tier, a no-brainer with zero annual fees, making it a positive start. Moving on, we hit the mid-game cards tier. If you spend a night at a hotel now and then, this tier has your back. A bit more on the fees, but the benefits start rolling in. Enter the business cards tier, a bit trickier to grab, but oh, the points you can rack up are worth it. Then comes the premium cards tier. Fancy, luxurious, and loaded with top-notch benefits. Finally, the Elite Cards tier. Ultra baller territory? Only for the select few. Now, let's break down the tiers. Starting with the baby cards. You've got secured cards, credit builder cards, and student cards. Secured cards are like training wheels for credit, where you put down a deposit that becomes your limit. Credit builder cards like Chase Freedom Rise help you move from JV to Varsity, linking your money to a checking account for better approval chances. And don't forget the student cards, perfect for those still hitting the books. Now let's move on to Tier 2, the starter credit cards that take things up a notch. With these cards, you enter the world of no annual fees and welcome bonus offers. They are straightforward, easy to get approved for, as long as your credit score is decent. Don't underestimate them. These cards are excellent. Some good choices include the Capital One Saver One, Chase Freedom Flex, and even the Apple Credit Card if used wisely. It's a powerful set, especially if you enjoy the cashback, no annual fee aspect. Now, on to Tier 3, the credit cards that bring more excitement. Here, the annual fees start to rise, but don't worry. You get cool credits and benefits to balance things out. These cards step up the game, offering rewards in special categories like travel, dining, groceries, and more. You might even get a free hotel night, like with the World of Hyatt or Marriott Bonvoy cards. Mid-tier cards are great for climbing the credit card ranks, often coming with generous welcome bonus offers. Spend a certain amount and you could get a cool 60,000 points, equivalent to $600 in cash. So even if you pay an annual fee, the welcome bonus can put you ahead in the first year. The best part is, you're not stuck with these cards forever. You can always switch or downgrade. Basically, having the flexibility to change your credit card lineup. Now let's talk about Tier 4, the business credit cards which are like a bigger version of the mid-tier ones. Business credit cards might seem daunting, but don't worry if you don't have a big business. Even walking a dog or doing a bit of freelancing qualifies you as a business owner. These cards are fantastic, although the minimum spending requirements for their welcome bonuses can be higher, sometimes ranging from $5,000 to $155,000. But if you're running a small business or doing side gigs, hitting these targets is often manageable. And the higher welcome bonuses make it worth it. Plus, some business cards have no annual fees. So it's not all about the numbers. Moving on to Tier 5, the Premium Cards. These are the top-notch ones, but come with a hefty annual fee. Like the Capital One Venture X card at $395, or the Amex Platinum at $695 per year. If you travel a lot or have a travel partner, these cards can be gold. They offer incredible benefits and welcome bonus opportunities. 
However, if you are not a frequent traveler or risk averse, these cards might not be your best fit. Still, even with one big trip a year, the value you get from these cards can outweigh the annual fee. Just make sure to use those perks to the fullest to make the most out of your investment. Now let's talk about the sixth and final tier, the Elite Cards. There are only two in this category, the Amex Centurion card with a hefty $5,000 annual fee and the JP Morgan card with a $550 annual fee. Getting invited to these cards is no walk in the park. For the Centurion card, you need to spend a crazy amount each year. And for the JP Morgan Reserve card, you need to have a whopping $10 million in assets with JP Morgan Chase. These elite cards come with some fancy perks, like a concierge service that can pull off some pretty wild requests. We've heard stories of them scoring last minute concert tickets or delivering flowers by helicopter for a proposal. Some of it might sound over the top, but when you're part of this exclusive club, apparently anything goes. A quick note about all the cards I mentioned. It doesn't necessarily get harder to get a card as you move up the tiers. The real challenge lies in those elite cards, and honestly, they might not be the best fit for your average Joe. Those sky-high annual fees are more about flexing than practical benefits. You might be better off looking at tier 5 cards like the Platinum card or the Chase Sapphire Reserve. Also, keep in mind that the difficulty of getting a card varies for each person. Your credit score and journey play a big role. The key to success in the credit card game is working your way up the tiers and racking up those points. You can mix it up depending on your plans, but the general rule is to start from the bottom and climb the ladder. Hey, before you go, remember, there's no specific order to these credit card tiers. It's all about what suits you best. If you want more information about money strategies and all the nitty gritty in the finance world, check out our other videos. And just a reminder, none of this is financial advice. We're all about sharing info, but it's crucial for you to do your own research or chat with a pro before making any big moves. Big thanks for hanging out and watching. If you enjoyed this breakdown, give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and don't forget that notification bell. It really helps our channel grow. Thanks again for being part of our community and catch you in the next one.